I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. If you've been shopping recently, you've seen them. Empty shelves in stores. Retailers short on everything from food to furniture. Consumer demand is soaring. Businesses are scrambling to get their goods off of ships and out of containers and into stores. Of 926 ports in the United States, two on the West Coast, Los Angeles and Long Beach, import 40% of all products that come into the country. Last year alone, the Port of Los Angeles handled $259 billion worth of cargo. It's a much different scene this year. Ships full of goods sit idle off the Southern California coast, while containers are piled high on the docks. A labor shortage there means much of the merchandise can't be moved. To break the backlog, President Biden has ordered the Port of Los Angeles to move to 24-hour production. Our correspondent, Dina Demetrius, has the story of a business owner anxiously waiting for his goods. On a sea of trouble, Charlie Wu is looking for his ships of toys for Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, and Easter. This is a sports ball, and then we probably buy the ball, not inflate it, and we inflate it here and put in some candies in, and, uh, and put it in a basket. And this is the type of thing Walmart would buy, let's exactly. say. Exactly. And these little components that are made in China, these are the types of things that are sitting at the Port of Los it's, Angeles yeah, right correct. now? Yeah, that's, you know, the, the basket is made in China too. His cargo is only a few miles offshore, but it could just as easily be a thousand miles away. I have a hundred containers somewhere out, out there and about 30 of them are already here. The CEO of Mega Toys in Los Angeles tracks his shipments multiple times a day, hoping his orders have left the port on a truck and are on their way to him. We don't know. They're unloading it. Where the container is available or not, we don't know. Okay, so this is a warehouse. And we have Wu a, knows about uncertain futures. In, Managing the legacy of childhood polio, he emigrated from Hong Kong as a teen in the 1960s, working in his family's toy company in L.A. But in 1989, Wu broke off and created his own company. Yeah, this uh, is his life's and, work. You know, in the busy season, we could have seven, 800 people working. You know, a lot of people supporting the families based on this. When the pandemic hit, Wu expected delays in products from China, but the current meltdown of the U.S. supply chain is beyond what he's ever experienced. The worst part here is, is uncertainty. Some of them will delay four months, some of them are delay one month, and you don't know which one came first. The production floor is empty because limited Christmas orders were fulfilled over the summer, and 150,000 Halloween costumes are still sitting at the port. Wu is also eating shipping costs that are three to four times higher than what he built into retail contracts. So uh, it may be $2,000, $3,000, you know, in the busy season, but now it's like $10,000. Consumer buying during the pandemic has shot up, bringing a 40% increase of imports to the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. The Port of Los Angeles is now operating 24-7 to provide some relief, but this is just one link in the supply chain. More truck drivers, warehouses, and rail service are needed, and there's no telling how much faster cargo will make it to retailers. Gene Soroka, director of the Port of L.A., met with the Biden administration last week to hammer out policies to speed things up. We know of many companies, family businesses that may import five or ten containers a year and their entire year counts on these next four weeks. So we're trying to segment cargo as best we can. Another big issue? The country is down 30,000 truck drivers. Ron Herrera of the Teamsters Union says too many drivers are hired by trucking companies as independent contractors rather than employees, paying for their own fuel and not getting paid for the hours they wait to pick up containers. We're fighting misclassification. Who wants to go into a profession where there's low wages, right, where um, there's uh, no benefits? And, you know, an employee model creates, you know, stability. It creates a workforce that can be depended on. The L.A. port can't build that workforce, but Director Soroka says it's using a data system to help those waiting for goods and those delivering them. What Soroka says they need is private companies willing to share information about their orders. More information will help make better decisions and allow us to prepare our staffing and machinery to move this surge of cargo that we'll continue to see 
for times to come. For Easter, the retailers are ambitious. They want to give me more business, but I can't. But you can't deliver the I business. I can't deliver the business. You know, that is a big challenge. A challenge that could change the landscape of business. Maybe this is the new normal. Maybe it's not something that you make a phone call to China and three weeks later the, the products arrive. Maybe that year is over. And that may mean consumer expectations will require a longer horizon too. In Los Angeles, I'm Dina Demetrius for Matter of Fact.